Hey guys, what's up? It's Stephanie and I have another video for you guys this week. So the topic for the video of this week um, is going to be about is a grade of 70 passing in PA school. So if you get a 70 in your classes, is that passing? Um, if you get a grade of 70 in your exams, is that passing? So I'll be answering that question. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so a grade of 70, you know, during my undergraduate, I know that for my chemistry classes, especially the classes that I struggled with the most, especially organic chemistry, I hated organic chemistry. Sorry for those of you that loved organic chemistry, but I just hated it. I hated it so much with the passion and I struggle with it so much. Anyways, this isn't about organic chemistry. So, um, in organic chemistry, I struggle with that class so much. And if I got a 70, I was so happy with it. Or even like a 75, 76, 77. I was like, you know what? I was really trying to get a B or an A in that class. But, you know, I was just at the point where I was just like, I just, I really want to pass. I don't want to fail this class. Now, is that the same thing for graduate school or PA school? Um, getting a grade of 70, is that passing? Well, unfortunately, you know, not really. So in my program, um, uh, we are allowed only to get nine hours of Cs. So basically that means nine credit hours of Cs. If I have a class that's four credit class and I get a C in it, then that means I have five more um, credit hours for my two years, two years and a half that I'm in the program um, of C's. If I get those nine credit hours of C's and I can get kicked out of the program, and that's the graduate school um, requirements. Not the program itself, but the graduate school requirements. Um, my director is an amazing person and if he could, he would try to help as much as he could and passes all of us, but unfortunately, you know, the graduate school has their uh, requirements, that's one of them. Um, you have to maintain a GPA of 3.00 and above. And not only that, it's also for financial aid. If you get a GPA lower than 3.00, um, they will put you on academic probation. Uh, so you have to hopefully make that up the next semester. So you have to increase your GPA or you will be put academic probation and maybe in trouble for not uh, be able to receive um, uh, financial aid for your next semester. So... This was definitely in the back of my mind the first semester. So when I first, um, um, on one of my exams, my first exam, I got a 78. And so I was really, really upset. And also another thing that my program has is that if you get anything lower than an 80, you are required to go talk to your academic advisor. So within our program, they divided us into groups um, and we were assigned certain academic uh, uh, advisors that are also professors that teach the classes. So. Whenever we would get below an 80, we were required to talk to our academic advisor. And basically when I went to go talk to him, you know, just want to know what was going on. Um, if there was a reason why I scored below an 80 and if there was any way he could help me or other professors can help me or other students can help me to be able to get hopefully a higher grade in my next exam. So, um, also, if you got lower than a 70, you're required to, to go talk to the professor that you got lower than a 70. So say if I got lower than a 70 in my anatomy exam, then I had to go talk to my anatomy professor. And on top of that, I had to go talk to my academic advisor. And also, uh, for my program, um, every week, according to my academic advisors and the professors, uh, they would meet up and just talk about students, um, talk about students that were struggling, and see how they could help them. So which I thought was really is really fantastic about my program that they do that, um, that they talk about students that are struggling to see how they can help them, um, etc. So yeah, so getting a 70, is it, um, are you able to get a 70 in school? Well, you, know, you definitely are, but you don't want to get a lot of 70s or even fail any of your exams. I can say that I did fail one of my exams uh, during my undergraduate, um, I'm sorry, during my first semester of PA school, I did unfortunately fail one of my exams and these were one of the steps I had to take. I had to go talk to my academic advisor and then on top of that I had to go talk to the professor who taught the class. And you know they just want to know what's going on and what was the reason why I was doing so well and then I ended up failing on failing this exam. But um, 
uh, definitely the first round of exams, I didn't, they were very low, but I was getting accustomed to studying. I didn't know what was the best way for me to study. And I was getting too accustomed also to the information that we're, we are learning, we're learning so much information. So I was definitely getting accustomed to that. So for C's, you definitely want to try to avoid them because if you have several C's that start accumulating, then at the end of the semester, you are really struggling because you're wanting to get that B. And for some of my classes, you know, we don't have any extra things that will help you bump up to your grade. So, so for some of my classes, like my pathophysiology class, we have quizzes, which are awesome. So if you do well in all your quizzes, then that will definitely bump up your grade because uh, the quiz is worth, worth in some of my classes, uh, one of my classes, 20%. So, you know, if you did bad on one of your exams, then, you know, the quizzes would hopefully offset that so you can get a B or an A in the class. Uh, versus, you know, some of my classes didn't have anything that would supplement it. For my ICM class, my introduction to clinical medicine, we just had five exams and they were worth each 20%. So if you did, if you started getting 70s on your exams and they're gonna add up and you know, at the end of the semester, you don't wanna get a C in a four credit hour class because that's going to definitely decrease your GPA and it's gonna account against you. So, you know, getting anything 80 and above, um, is what you want to do. You definitely don't want to get anything below an 80 and you want to hopefully, your goal is to get 90 and above in your um, exams and in your classes so you can get your A's, get your 4.0. Did I get a 4.0 this semester? No, I did not. Um, I definitely struggled this first semester. I wish I would have, uh, it was definitely a learning experience and hopefully the second semester uh, the spring semester, I will be able to do better in my classes. Um, some of the students, uh, the second year students are in their clinical year, they say that the second semester is easier, but that's because you are already accustomed to the material and you're accustomed to, you've learned how to study and the best way of studying that works for you. So I'm hoping um, that's going to be the case, guys, for me in the second semester. So, um, yeah, so getting 70s, you know, um, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to get, hopefully, Bs and As because you want to get higher than your 3.0 so you won't be placed on academic probation. Um, now, there was some classmates that did get some Cs. I, thankfully, this semester, I didn't get any Cs, but I was very, very close, guys, to getting um, Cs in my classes, and it was really stressful because I was so close to that B, um, it just it gave me more anxiety and it stressed me out even more. And I'm hoping I don't have to do that, that the second semester. But um, you know, there was some classmates in my class that did get uh, um, some C's um, and it wasn't because they're not smart. It was just, you know, some of them were dealing with anxiety and I could say I was dealing with anxiety and um, also learning how to study, what is the best way to study and best way to retain that information. And so, yeah, so uh, PA school, PA program, um, although it was okay to get a few C's in my undergraduate, definitely not okay to get C's in uh, PA school. You really, really want to avoid that. You can get a few C's on your exams, but then you have to make up for them in the following exams. So, if I got a 78 on my first exam, I had to make sure that I got a 90 plus on the following exam so it can offset that grade. Especially in those classes that didn't have any extra stuff that can fluff up, fluff up your grade or increase it or help you get a higher grade. So um, you want to definitely be careful with those C's. So definitely, definitely be careful. All right guys, so I hope this video was helpful. Uh, just talking about my experience first semester, a question that I had in the back of my mind when I was applying to PA school and when I got accepted into PA school. So hopefully those of you that did have this question, hopefully I did answer it. Um, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, make sure you comment below or just send me an email and then I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. Um, I apologize if I don't get back to you guys as soon as possible. PA school, especially didactic year is really rigorous and it's, um, uh, it's very stressful, so I apologize if I don't get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you guys, you guys are so amazing. Um, thank you for all the nice comments you guys have given me. Um, the thumbs up on my videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alright guys, I will talk to you guys soon.